Hello and welcome to another video where this time we're going to take a look at correcting this image of Gloucester Cathedral. Now looking at the picture you can see it's got a little bit of a laid back appearance. You can see the vertical lines are all coming inwards and upwards to a central point here. It's what's known as converging verticals. It is quite a common problem whenever you're photographing buildings or any form of architecture as soon as you tilt your camera upwards which is what I did because I wanted to get a little bit of uh, space between the top of the tower just so we had a bit of sky here I did tilt the camera up very slightly the result converging verticals looking at the picture there's also another slight problem it's bulging out slightly in this region here now this is known as barrel distortion it happens if you've got a zoom lens and if you take it at the widest end or if you've got a wide angle lens and uh, yeah, the same thing can happen. The result is barrel distortion. So let's make a start. The first thing we're going to do as ever is command J or control J. That's command J, control J to duplicate the background layer. Next, for the barrel distortion, we're going to head up to filter. Coming down to distort, we're going to go across to sphere eyes. Now when sphere eyes opens, taking a look, we got the preview window here. There is no preview button and we got a little graph down here showing us quite a nice looking ball. Now if we click down, you can see we look at the image and it looks pretty good like that. If we release it, out it pops, looks a bit inflated. Clue here is this ball. Right, let's take a look here where it says 100%. If you click in the window, you've got all of these uh, various zoom ratios. Let's take a look at uh, 25. Now I think we need to go in a little bit more. There, 12%. Clicking down, looking good. Release it. Bit of inflation going on. Right, amount 100%. That's the default. As soon as we start to move it in, look at the way this grid pattern is coming inwards. Look at the way the image is coming inwards as well if we take it right the way down to zero we have now got i said zero thank you we have now got horizontal and vertical lines click in the window and nothing happens we have gone from a convex look we are now going to concave we're taking it this way and there's something i remember from school days <laughs> right you can see we've now gone the opposite direction we don't need to go anywhere near as far as that. In fact, it's going to be very low numbers. Let's have a look at minus four. Yeah, perhaps a bit too much. Take it back one to minus three. That looks good like that. We're now going to click OK. And if we just take a quick look, we've gone from this to that. Right, for the next stage, let's bring the cathedral upright. Now, just so we can see the transform clearly, I'm going to right click and I'm going to change the color of my background to dark gray, which I quite like anyway. So let's come up to image, transform, free transform. Command T or control T was the shortcut. Let's just go back for one second because there's something else. We got free transform, we got skew, we got distort, we got perspective. So we got all of these available to us. Now with the transform tool, there's grab handles to each of the corners, as well as the top, the bottom and the two sides. Bring your cursor inside, right click. Now look what's available to us. Free transform, scale, free rotate layer, skew, distort, perspective. You've also got these as well. So there's a lot more available to us. Now we're going to use perspective. If we come to the top corner, if we click on this, as soon as we start to pull it out, you'll notice the two sides are coming out equally. I'm going to pull it out to this sort of region here. Now in particular, I'm looking at the chimney pot here. I'm looking at this post as well as the edge of the building. Let's take it a little bit further. Let's go to this sort of region, taking a look. Let's get in there. Yeah, we're coming close here. Now the grab handles have disappeared. Don't worry, all you need to do is use Command-0 or Control-0. That's Command-0, Control-0. You pop out. There's the grab handles again. So we can now take it just a little bit further. That chimney pot's looking good there. Looking at the other side, I think it needs to go just a touch more to this sort of region here. Now at this stage, I'm not using any grids. I'm not using any guides. I prefer to do it by eye. I've tried doing it with grids. I've tried doing it with uh, guides. And if we just come to view and if we just have a look at 
a grid. I find doing this, it tends to, it just covers the image and I'm losing track. Although looking at it, that looks, yeah, you can see that one there, but it, well, yes, okay. Let's go back and just remove those for a second, but I'll show you how I do it just a little bit later. Looking at the image, this tower here looks like it's still sloping. This time we've gone to the opposite direction. It looks like it's sloping out slightly to the right. So let's right click. Let's go to distort, come into the bottom little grab handle. Let's pull this out. I'm looking now at that tower, particularly this line here. I'm also looking at that chimney. That looks pretty good like this, perhaps just a touch more into that region there. Now, because we've pulled it out using perspective, in effect, we've actually crunched the image down a bit. Looking at this window here, I've got a feeling that should be a lot more elongated. Looking at these uh, little, that's where the, the bells are, I think that should be far more elongated as well. So we're gonna right click. We're now gonna go to free transform. And you can see how handy it is as well, just right clicking inside the frame. It doesn't work if you come to this area here. If you right click, nothing happens. But right click inside the frame, we can just change the way the transform tool is working very quickly and very easily. Now clicking, I'm lifting it up. We're now stretching it up. I'm going to take it to this area here. I'm looking in particular at the window. I'm looking at the post box as well as the windows here for the bells. Just taking it to that position here looks pretty good. Right, double clicking to apply the transform. Let's take a quick look. And if we just switch it off, there it is before, switch it back on. We've now pulled it upright. And doing it, it's the sort of thing you want to make it look as if you've attached a rope and you're now pulling it towards you from the top there and up it comes. Looks good like that. Right, let's come to image, resize. Let's come to reveal all, which is now brought back the entire image and you can see just how much is hanging over the edge. In fact, I'm going to use command zero, control zero, just to pop out a little bit further. We've got all of this area here. Looking down at the bottom, document size, 37.8 megabytes. That's in a single layer. It is 80.6 megabytes in size. So there's a lot of wasted information hanging over those edges. So it is important that we trim it down. Right. So bringing our crop tool into this position here. And this is going to give us our first clue. Looking at the line there, that looks pretty good. And with the crop tool, let's bring it out. So bring it to this position here. That looks good on that line of the building. Let's take a look here. Yep, looking good there and there. Our chimney pot, very important. Yeah, that looks good as well. Right, let's take it to the end like that. Just giving us our, a little bit of space here. I think that's still just a bit close. So let's bring it out a little bit further into this position. That looks better. Double clicking to apply the crop. It's now cropped it. Document size has now dropped down to 64.2 megabytes in size. It is 31.3 megabytes as a flattened layer. Right, let's pick up the hand tool. Looking around the picture, looks pretty good. Right, let's come and take a look at view. Let's take a look at the ruler. Now with the ruler, we're gonna come, we're gonna click, we're gonna drag this out. Let's see how this looks here. That looks good. I can release it. It falls in nicely. Clicking down, pulling the ruler out again. Looking at this one. There, that looks about right. Yep, that looks pretty good like that. I finally just do one more on that all important chimney pot. There looks pretty good, or you can bring it back. This has always bothered me, but when you actually measure it out, it actually falls. It's just one of these optical illusions, I think, with this particular one. I think it's partly to do with the there's columns on the top of this tower that isn't columns on the top of the tower behind. It's not the way you can see it anyway. But when you look at it here, there, that falls in nicely with that. Right looks good. The other way of viewing it, of course, if I just clear those guides is to come to view. You can go to grid. Now with grid, if we come up where it says Photoshop elements, editor preferences, coming down to grids and guides, this is where you can set the colors. That's why we had the green with the guides. I'm also using green with my grids. Click in the window. You can select any color just to make sure it stands out from the background. 
I am using inches, but of course you can use uh, pixels, centimeters, millimeters, whichever one you're comfortable using. I've got the grid every one. I've got subdivision of three. Let's go to one. There it is. You can see our one inch square looking. And with grids, it can be difficult to get it to just line up where you want it to be. This is where you might need to experiment, say doing it every two there that falls in nicely with this one here it falls in nicely with that chimney pot so that works well here let's try three see if we can get a few more looking pretty close there looks like a, a very tiny run from top to bottom on that so i think we'll leave it like that for the moment we're now going to click on ok right view we're now going to go to grid again just to switch that off command T or control T let's right click let's go to distort I'm going to pull this out very slightly to the bottom just looking at that tower there I think that will do nicely double click into apply once again pick up the crop tool because we got some of that uh, wasted information just hanging over the edge here and if we just crop you can just see it's reduced down very very slightly Okay, got a bit of a gap down this side. So let's grow our hedge back, picking up the clone stamp tool, coming down to tool options. There it is, the clone stamp. I've got a soft edge brush. Sample all layers is ticked. I'm using a 100 pixel brush. It is on aligned. Bringing my cursor over this area. I'm now gonna press the Alt or the Option key. That's where we're picking pixels up from. We're now gonna grow our hedge quickly back into this region here. And just going over that right to the edge there there that looks good okay perhaps brighten this position up here as well great stuff there we are there is our finished image just pressing h on the keyboard to give me back my hand tool let's have a quick run through that was our start image we then duplicated the layer spherized tool just to remove that barrel distortion we then used the transform tool to bring it upright there it is, the entire picture. We then cropped it and uh, coming down, we used the guides, then pulled it out a little bit more before finally cropping it there, and then cloning in the hedge. So there it is, job done. So go on, give it a try on your images. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and don't forget to subscribe as there's plenty more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.